Hey guys, we're on number three of this series. Um, this came in on 11-17-23, and it's called Final Judgment. Many days from now, the end of all will be achieved. After this, the final judgment of man. All should be aware that there is a final judgment before me, the Lord God Almighty. You will stand before me, and the book of your life will be examined. Those who lived in the flesh, those who followed the evil one, those who rejected my son, all of these will be banished to the lake of fire. Your soul will have been kept in hell for a thousand years if you did not come to me through my son Jesus. There is no second chance when you have rejected me and died. Eventually, you will stand before me and your life judged against perfection. Those who accept my son Jesus as the Messiah, Savior, and propitiation for their sins, when they die, their soul is instantly transported to heaven. The one before you speaking my words is a living testimony to this. She died and came before my throne and selflessly chose to return. In the judgments upon those who have Jesus, Jesus' blood covers all of their sins. They are seen as sin-free in my eyes. Because of Jesus' blood, it covers the payment for all sins, for all who are in covenant with me through him. Be under the blood of Jesus. Be covered by his blood. Be saved and secure. Mighty things are to occur, and those under the blood will be protected. The shame of many is soon to be revealed. For it will be known who is not covered by the blood, for they will not have safety, blessings, provisions, peace, and joy. Many who call themselves Christians will be found in shame. All who follow other paths will be found in shame. My leaders, the anointed, will come and help those in shame to offer hope and salvation through Jesus. If you find yourself in shame, cry out to me, repent and turn to me. Stop living your life your way and read the Bible and see my way and live according to my son's words. This is the directive. Jesus, my only son, is the way, the truth, and the life. All that come to him will be saved. Become pure in heart. I love the pure in heart. The pure in heart shall see heaven. Bring your problems, bring your sins, bring your impurity to the cross where Jesus died for all sin. Lay them at the foot of the cross and walk away with Jesus instead. He conquered death and the grave when he rose from the dead. Jesus is holy. Jesus sits at my right hand in heaven. He will rule on the earth for a thousand years in just a few years from now. Read of it in my word, the millennial kingdom. Be part of those who live in the millennial kingdom. Be of peace and joy in the things to quickly come upon the earth. Be mine. I love you. I want you to live a full and rich life in happiness, joy, praise, kindness, and true, deep, fulfilling love and peace that you have not known as yet. But it must be your choice. You must come. Come to me. Hear my words. Read them. Ask me to help you understand them. I want to see you succeed. Forget what others think or believe. Come and give me and my son a true look. Learn from my book, the Bible, not a man, what the words say. If you come, I will open your understanding to what you read. Come to me. It is time. Lay down your burdens and come. I have open arms for all who come to me in humility. I love my own. Come, be a part of my family. Come. And now there are verses. Here are all the verses that I'm going to read. The verses for number three. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 4, 7 through 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not know love does not know God. For God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that the Son has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, 
Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Second Timothy 1.10 But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Hebrews 2, 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Romans 2, 3 to 4. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with the power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Acts 20, 30 to 33. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord first john 5 11, and this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life and this life is in his son jude 1 5 through 7 but i want to remind you though you once knew this that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these have given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And then Hebrews 10, 28 to 31. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenants, by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. For now we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So that's it for this one and I'll see you next time.